Okay, hi guys and welcome to today's show. Now in the last episode we looked at the history of horology and very soon I'm going to be making a follow-up, a part two of that, specifically looking at the history of traditional watchmaking as we know it and the kind of part two of, of that. Uh, I, think, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So hopefully I'll do that even next week, the week after. Uh, depending on how many reviews I get, uh, I managed to get done. Today, I thought as a complete change from looking at the you know ancient uh, story of horology, we'd look at something completely different, but just as interesting and integral to that history. And that is, of course, digital watches. Now you're probably wondering why on earth have I got this Casio? Now this Casio, believe it or not, just bought it in for a bit of fun. This is the famous F91W, one of the most iconic Casio watches of all time. And it also happens to be my very first digital watch. Not this particular one, I, I, I don't, I think I, I think I swapped it for some micro machines in the playground at school. But when I was a child, <laughs> when I was a child growing up in South London, South London, the Casio F91W was my first digital watch and I remember distinctly thinking I was the coolest kid in school because of this watch. And I'm buying it back now, I mean it was, I think it was about ten dollars, uh, but priceless for, 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 for that Proustian Madeleine moment, all the, tri all the memories this thing triggers is, is you know, is, is worth far more than the ten dollars I could tell you that it's it's quite different to how I remember obviously it's a lot smaller because when I was a child it, everything you know obviously everything seems hu huge but it smells different I think I remember it smelling very plastic I think they've changed the plastic or something but I also bought this for another reason I'm gonna be reviewing this this is my latest uh, pro track Sorry, let me get that in the focus there. This is from Japan, domestic model, the most latest Pro Trek. Uh, this is a 2015 full ABC watch. So we got uh, ABC is uh, altimeter, compass, no, sorry, altimeter, barometer, and compass. So, you know, quite different. I mean, just look at the evolution. I thought it would be interesting to see, to look at the evolution of the digital watch, what they offer now compared to all those many years ago as, as a child in, <laughs> as a child in the 90s I mean it's, it's so indicative of the 90s isn't it I mean you can't get more 90s than that um, anyway I should do a wristwatch check and again just to kind of illustrate this 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 amazing uh, world of extremes within the horology I'm wearing probably the most traditional looking of my watches and this is the Tissot Genero, which you guys guessed, correctly guessed, and let me get it in focus there. Is it in focus? Come on, let's get in focus. Now I've put it on the Collareb to really bring out that vintage vibe. Look at that dial, so vintage. And you know, this is a manual wind, obviously, with very kind of 1940s, World War II era styling, you know, that dial. Uh, so you you couldn't get two watches more <laughs> more f further apart than than these two. Absolutely, you know, the opposite ends of the spectrum really is quite fitting for today's video. Anyway, I thought I would uh, go down memory lane. Uh, I mean, ten dollars, why not? So anyway, guys, uh, enough chatting. I've done the wristwatch check, done the intro. Let's switch perspectives now and have a closer look at these two amazing Casio watches. Today we are indeed reviewing two amazing Casio watches, uh, both amazing for entirely different reasons. Before we get into this, I think it's fair just to give a little bit of background to Casio, uh, because believe it or not, they've been around as long as the 40s. They were founded in Tokyo in 1946 by Tadao Casio. They released their first entirely electronic, and this is a world first as well, uh, an entirely electronic calculator in 1957. So quite, uh, quite an important achievement and uh, an important brand, especially in the history of uh, technology. In the 70s, they expanded to cameras, watches, electronic keyboards, printers, clocks, cash registers, 
a whole bunch of things. And then towards the 80s and 90s, uh, they started introducing more kind of electronic computers, PDAs. Uh, and obviously, uh, this is where we kind of Casio uh, fit neatly into uh, my world of horology, and that is with the release of the G Shock in 1983, the uh, my birth year as well. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. Now, this particular Casio, this is the famous uh, F. 91W as you see here and this was released in 1991 now I'll go over the specs very very quickly because there is a, there's a ton of reviews uh, there's you know there's not really that much I, I, I can think of to say apart from my own nostalgic connections to this watch so I'll just go very quickly through the uh, through the specs the uh, F91W has a one hundredth of a second stopwatch and can count up to 59 minutes and 59 seconds uh, almost an hour and it has a measuring modes net time split time and first and second place times there's an option of an hourly beep and a single daily alarm so quite uh, basic by today's standards but uh, obviously when it was released it was uh, pretty cutting edge. It does not support leap year, so you have to uh, adjust it manually yourself. And it has an LED backlight that uh, illuminates the display, and this is green in color. In a while, in a moment, we'll do a, a loom shot so we can compare them as well. Accuracy-wise, it's reported to be accurate of about plus, uh, plus minus 30 seconds per month, which uh, obviously, being quartz, uh, and being a digital quartz, of course, is uh, going to be superior to anything uh, automatic. Well, not anything, but most automatic uh, watches powered by a single CR2019 lithium button cell, uh, which is, uh, if you unscrew the back here, uh, you can pop it in yourself. As you see, it's got a screw down case back. Uh, we have the three buttons, we have a mode of the light and the uh, on off and uh, reset button for the, uh, the chronograph. Now another staggering thing that this thing can boast is that it has, it can be go for seven years on one battery which is quite an, uh, an achievement in itself. It weighs about 20 grams, uh, which is <laughs> next to nothing. Honestly, you hardly, I hardly notice I've got it in my hand. You know, it's unbelievably light. It has a water resistance of 30 meters, which is three bar. And this is our ISO standard meaning, uh, which is uh, suitable for kind of everyday use. Definitely not showering, bathing, swimming, anything like that. Uh, you can wear it in the rain, um, splash it lightly, but uh, it is not. Uh, waterproof in in like a dive or anything like that which is a little bit unfortunate but then again it's a ten dollar watch you know so can't really expect um, heaven and earth for ten bucks now uh, the operation uh, is, is pretty standard we have a mode button here which we just press it down we just cycle there's the alarm we just the stopwatch stop start and reset and all the rest of it we have the day of the week the date time pm am indicator very very simple not you know not nothing out amazing um compared to its uh, this modern descendant which we'll have a look at in just a moment one thing that uh, is is this watch has become infamous with is its connection with terrorism and it's uh, it's become believe it or not become referred to as the al-qaeda watch or even the bin laden found on the wrist of a lot of uh, terrorists uh, in the last decade also has been one of the most commonly used uh, timekeeping devices uh, easily modified for making bombs and used as a detonator for very ru rudimentary uh, bombs uh, which is a <laughs> bit of a macabre uh, side to this watch um, for obvious reasons. It's extremely uh, cheap to replace, it's extremely accurate, it's um, reliable um, and it's easy to unscrew the back and, and access the, uh, the, the circuitry inside and the CIA have uh, you know, noted that this is the most commonly used watch in making um, bombs so it's got quite an infamous uh, bit of a dark side to it as well. Now for me my connotations with this watch are completely different. It 
takes me way back to my childhood. I remember this blue outline and I remember the smell of the strap, uh, especially in the hot summer and it would, it would get kind of sticky and, and smell a little bit. And I, it just, it brings back the whole 90s for me. And I just thought I was the coolest kid in the whole school, I really did. Um, quite funny enough, I don't remember this this stamped buck, buckle. It has got a metal buckle and with the PVD. I don't remember this. For some reason, I don't remember the buckle. Uh, maybe they've changed that, I don't know. Maybe you guys can fill me in, I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, let's just get a quick dimensions while we're on the subject. We've got a diameter of 32 millimeters, a thickness of eight, and a half, I would say, lug to lug, 37. Quite interestingly, the lug width here is 21. Uh, I never noticed also when I was a kid, the, the there's spring bar holes, so you can actually take this out uh, and attach uh, a NATO strap to this, which might be pretty cool, which also kind of increases its um, desirability to use I guess for military purposes. The rubber is very kind of cheap flimsy looking however the construction of it is <laughs> quite impressive you know considering it only costs ten dollars it doesn't nothing you know all the buttons are very responsive nothing rattles it's it's a very solid feeling thing made in Thailand and then you've got just the basic information there so nothing you know nothing amazing anyway so quite an important watch uh, definitely a historic piece and uh, you can <laughs> it's just funny that you can buy a bit of hor horological history for ten dollars <laughs> you know but yeah a very cool watch indeed I, I bought it as a bit of a laugh I guess uh, but also I wanted to kind of see where Cassie have gone in 25 years they've gone from this to this beast here. So, now what is this? Well, this is an entirely different animal altogether. This is the latest, uh, or the latest version of the Pro Trek. I actually had, I've had several Pro Treks. You can check back in one of my earliest videos. I did a comparison between uh, one of the predecessors of this. The, the, uh, I forget, it was the uh, PRW 3000. Well, this is the PRW 3100T slash 7. The T is for titanium. It does come on a titanium bracelet. I have since removed it and I managed to track down some aftermarket bands. I've got a variety of colors. I've got this nice gray which I attached myself. You just unscrew these little screws, take off the bracelet. And I've got a nice playful orange for the summer. For me, I think these are much more comfortable. But I have to say, the bracelet is really pretty good. We've got this really fantastically designed clasp. The push buttons uh, are very, it's, it's really remarkably solid. It's very light, obviously, because it's titanium. But what I love is the design, the way the fold over hides the button so you can't mistakenly open it. Very well made. The only thing is I, I'm not too fond of the titanium color. Uh, there's a little bit of polishing there and then the rest is matted. Also, the, the pins are, uh, are a little bit kind of cheap. But, you know, you don't buy Casios for their bracelet. It's hardly a, an Omega. Since I put it on the rubber, it's an absolute dream and real pleasure to wear. Protrex are a line of... Um, they're not, not G-Shocks. They're a line uh, separate from the G-Shocks that uh, specialize in outdoor activities, uh, specifically navigation, kind of survival tools, that kind of thing. Now this is the, a 2015 release, so almost 25 years on from uh, its, its early descendant here. The level of technology available here and just the, the amount of things this thing can do is ridiculous. So we'll go through the spec very quickly. Ironically, we've got the same mineral glass. I think this is a slightly bit tougher. Got a hundred meter water resistance. The case and bezel, the actual bezel here is a beautiful stainless steel and it's got lovely beveled edges. If we, if we just see here, there's a really nice high polish that catches the light just on the end of the bezel. So this is stainless steel and then we have uh, the rest of it is a resin, a special plastic resin. Quite a complex looking thing. There we have the sensor. This is the ABC sensor. This of course is an ABC watch, uh, which includes altimeter, A, B, barometer, and C, compass. So all your kind of survival gear in one watch. 
we have uh, the LED backlight. In fact, let's uh, switch now and have a quick look at how they compare the old 1991 uh, backlight to this new uh, backlight and this also has tilt enabled uh, LED so when you tilt it it automatically comes on and it's quite clever this thing as well it can sense that it's there's a lot of light so it won't turn it on and when there's darkness it will turn the auto um, auto tilt LED backlight on uh, which is just so cool you know a watch that figures these things out very very smart anyway let's uh, change now to a loom shot on the left we have the loom of the protract as you can see really bright really responsive i mean almost too bright and then here we have the loom on the f91w pretty limited and then we'll compare it to the protract very bright so have a look at that i do quite like the green of the uh, old one it does bring back memories but nothing compared to that. I mean, it's almost so bright. It's almost too bright. It's like a torch at night. Anyway, there's the loom shot. Let's take it back to the studio. Okay, welcome back. So, continuing on with the specifications of the ProTrack. This, of course, is fully solar powered. It also has a time calibration uh, signal reception. Uh, it will set itself from signals it receives around the globe. The solar panels are actually uh, around the dial here. And it's very, very smart. It will, um, it will power down when it's not being used. It will sense that it's not being used and it will power down to save electricity, to save energy at night. And uh, it will sense when it's being moved about and when it's being used. We have a really nice, big, clear uh, time and then seconds indicated and little markers indicating separate things. Here we have, right now it's giving me a barometric reading, a little graph predicting the air pressure. This you can actually use to, uh, to help figure out if it's going to rain, that kind of thing. And, and if you press the adjust, you can cycle through. I can have the day of the week and the date, or I can have the month and the day. So if we cycle through to the next screen, the next thing we see is sunset, sunrise. And you can just scroll through all different um, dates, and it will tell you when the, the sun will rise and when it will set which is really really cool information especially uh, if you're hunting or you're doing some kind of outdoor activity you need to really know this kind of inf useful information especially if your life depends on it very very useful indeed especially for survival outdoor kind of stuff next we have the uh, this is the log book really where you can record all kind of information uh, you can record your ascent, descent with the altimeter, uh, barometric trends, uh, compass readings, that kind of thing. Next, of course, we have the stopwatch. Now, I really like the stopwatch here because it's so big, especially when uh, I found when I was, uh, if I just let it run, when I was on the treadmill, I, I, my eyes get so full of sweat. It's sometimes hard to see the, the, the stopwatch on my other G-Shock, but this is so clear. Uh, that I can instantly see it because it's not so nice and big so really really cool and easy to read so you've got hours at the top minutes seconds obviously and of course we've also got space at the bottom for the time so we still can uh, read the time which is fantastic this is a countdown timer same thing just in reverse alarms you've got five different alarms which is absolutely fantastic uh, world time, so you've got London there, just Madrid, Paris, Rome, Berlin, Athens, Cairo, all around the world. So you could just cycle through that until your heart's content. And then eventually, uh, New York there, and then eventually you can go back to London. So let's just go back to London. So, that's, so you've got world time, very, very useful indeed. And then back to the main uh, screen so really really cool and then of course on this side we if we use these buttons here we can use the compass this is north here so as you move around I'll give you a reading so if we try and find north let's try and find north there we go and north is about there so and you of course you've got the degrees written sorry it's a bit dirty of course, you've got the degrees written there. And the great thing is this is the third generation of the sensor. So the information is very quick. Also, 
it still works on the tilt on the wrist so you don't have to take it off some of the earlier pro tricks you had to take it off which is a bit of a nuisance if we change to barometric we got uh, temperature I tell you the temperature now this is off because it was on my wrist so you have to take it off your wrist for a little while uh, and then of course the altimeter so right now we we're below sea level <laughs> Um, so that's the altimeter there so everything you need to know so very very useful if you're outdoors and I just I've got to say I love the, the, the modern design of this I love I really prefer it over its predecessors this uh, brush bezel really gives it a modern look uh, it's also been updated with the most newest LED supposed to be the most readable of the Pro Treks and the most clearest of the screen I had the negative display version before and it was uh, it was okay but this is so much more easier to read also they've called this particular one the um the slim line because they've also made it thinner which is fantastic we've got the same third generation abc sensor that you'll find in a g-shock range man but look much much thinner in fact let's uh, let's get the dimensions so the dimensions are 42 which uh, for this kind of watch is actually pretty small thickness of 12 millimeters again that's that's pretty slender for for a for a digital watch you know considering the g-shocks are pretty big lug to lug we're looking at 54 so quite big there but it wears really really nicely the width of the bracelet strap is about 22. Uh, you could in theory put a nato strap in there but it'd be a very tiny one maybe i think there are adapters uh, available i find replacing this very very easy and uh, a lot more comfier on the rubber so anyway let's uh, do a quick cruise shot so there we go and as you see on my tiny wrist it wears very very comfortable it doesn't weigh a thing uh, i think the weight of this is it's 106 grams five times the weight of this but actually in the whole scheme of things it really doesn't weigh that much at all i mean this this you, you don't even feel it's like a piece of paper uh, this is very light indeed, and especially I've taken the bracelet off, so it's probably a, a good deal lighter. It's definitely under 100 grams, but uh, you don't really feel it. And because it's low profile, it's, it's very comfortable. It hugs the wrist because of these lovely curved lugs. Now, the accuracy of this, interestingly, is plus or minus 15 seconds a month, so twice the accuracy of uh, its uh, ancestor here the battery is said to last seven months with a solid charge so you can charge it for a day in the sun put it in a drawer for seven months and it will go to sleep by itself still keep time and then when you wake it up <laughs> within seven months it will know exactly what time it is it will calibrate itself it checks i think something like six times a day uh, to the nearest antenna or, where, or whatever they call it really impressive we have uh, a, ba a battery life indicator a h at the right at the bottom indicating high so it's got good full charge the signal it receives it's uh, there's one in china uh, two in japan one for north america and two in europe and none unfortunately for south america or, or australia sadly but you can all obviously set it manually this is a Japanese domestic version but you can find this on Amazon uh, I think it's the most refined version of this particular pro track I just love it's I mean look at those buttons it's just the, the machine work is done impeccably well it's very very solid the PRW 3000 I found a little bit kind of um, a little bit flimsy feeling whereas this is like a rock nothing rattles I mean nothing rattles whatsoever the buttons are much more solid this time around we have this lovely knurled work on the three buttons to operate the abc features that really cool sensor looking thing and then uh, beautiful uh, machining on the adjust and mode buttons we have another button here kind of integrated into the lug design which operates the light uh, which you as you saw earlier and then just one of the coolest looking bezels i've ever seen <laughs> you know there's no colors uh, used i mean there's a tiny little bit of color used where it says can you even see that where it says pro trek there and then the little indicators uh so really not that much color uh, which i like it gives it this very kind of stark modern 
militaristic look. Uh, when I'm wearing this, I feel like I'm, I should be in Minority Report or, or AI or some kind of... Um, it's, it's futuristic without being tacky, which I really think. And at the end of the day, it's functional. So it's, it's um, well, just like its, its ancestor, really. Functional, no-nonsense. It's a really great, well-designed watch. Uh, and I think for the price, you're getting an absolute bargain. And a lot of people say that ABC watches are going to be obsolete with the with later versions of the smartwatch. But uh, I actually think they're, they're kind of a soft spot. They're really good. Uh, I've been waiting for uh, for a Pro Trek like this. The uh, Pro Treks to me so far, you know, I've owned several, have always been something was missing. Uh, the only downfall I would say about this watch is uh, on a on a previous version of a Pro Trek, these seconds would count around the outside of the dial, and I thought that was just the coolest looking thing. It's a shame they didn't use that because you know when you use the compass feature, that track where the uh, compass markings are on. It would be nice if they animated that for a chronograph, for indicating laps, or um, you know, having maybe if we go to back to the main clock, the previous project I had used it to indicate seconds passing on the clock, and I just thought that was pure class. Nevertheless, a uh, very minor thing. I mean, it's it's an almost perfect design. I think it's modern. I think it's tastefully done. I think for the smaller wrist, if you don't want a huge G-Shock range man, this is extremely comfortable. Uh, it's a fun, I dare to say, the best ABC watch I've seen yet. Really interesting and cool to see um, how they've evolved. Even a digital watch has its place in horological history. I mean, <laughs> what a cool pair of watches. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Let's uh, take it back to the studio. Okay, welcome back, guys. Now, thoughts, queries, opinions, questions... Uh, all the rest of it, please, down in the comments below. Uh, I'd also like to hear what your favourite Casio watches are. Are there any Casio watches you want me to review, to get into review? I'd really like to hear your feedback on the Pro Trek. What do you think of it? I'm, I'm really loving it. Well, as you know. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, guys. Ciao.